Hi everyone, this is Melissa with Sew Yours Patterns. Today's video is going to be a sewing tutorial on how to make my very first handbag pattern, the Martini Crossover. This is a crossbody bag with the option to remove the adjustable strap and carry it with the grab and go handles. I've done a separate introductory video that explains all of the specifics of the bag and any modifications that you'd like to make, so feel free to go ahead and check that out. This video is just going to be the step-by-step -step sewing instructions. Thank you to everybody who has already purchased so far. To sew along with me, go to sewyourspatterns.com to purchase the pattern. Let's go ahead and get on into it. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and begin by talking about all of the different pieces that make up the bag. To start, we have our two main exterior panels, which I've lined with SF 101. Here I have the exterior slip pockets for the front and the back of the bag as well as the lining for the slip pockets. I opted not to do the SF-101 on these pieces um, because it is an outdoor fabric that has a little bit more weight uh, versus your standard quilting cotton. Here I have e the zipper lining pocket for the exterior of the bag, as well as the zipper lining pocket for the interior of the bag. Here is the lining slip pocket. Um, we have the handle anchors right here. This is the top of the lining, two pieces here, and the bottom lining pieces. We have four zipper panels, zipper tab. These are my strap um, connectors. I'm gonna go ahead and do strap connectors on the side here for the adjustable strap, but I'm also gonna use um, some connectors right here because I am gonna add in this hardware to allow the um, handles to fall down. Then I've got my two um, exterior gusset ends that'll go here on my gusset. This is my lining gusset right here. I have my two handles that I've already prepped. I've got my adjustable strap that I've prepped. And I have my uh, Decaville Heavy that I'm gonna be using as the uh, stabilizer for the bottom of the bag, which is optional. Um, I've got two zippers. Um, the pattern calls for 10 inches um, or longer if that's all you have. Um, I happen to have 12 inch zippers that I'll be cutting down. These are going to be for the zipper pocket on the exterior of the bag, as well as the lining zipper pocket. And then you also need a 12 inch zipper or longer, or if you prefer to use zipper tape, you can do that as well. Um, this is gonna be for the top zipper closure. For my hardware, I've got two swivel clasp for the adjustable strap. I've got the adjustable slap, strap slider. I'm gonna be using um, the strap ends here, just like I do um, have here on this bag right here. Uh, I've got four of the purse feet and I've got two of the D-rings. You can also use O-rings if you prefer. I think I've covered all of the pieces, so let's go ahead and get into the actual construction of the bag. I'm going to begin by sewing up my straps. Um, if you haven't made straps before, essentially you're gonna take your piece, um, put the SF-101 on it, draw a center line uh, two inches in, and start folding in and pressing the fabric towards the center, just like this and you're gonna uh, fold and press it again. And we're gonna go ahead and um, top stitch at 1 8th of an inch down both sides here. Uh, when I'm using cotton, I like to go ahead and um, top stitch with a four, about a four um, stitch length. And I always start and stop back stitching. And there's our first strap. And now we're going to go ahead and do our adjustable strap the same way. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to connect 
the hardware to the adjustable strap. Start by sliding in the strap end into one of the holes of the strap slider and then you're going to feed it back down through the other hole. Make sure you have about a two inch fold over here. Go ahead and pin or clip it in place. And now we want to make sure that the strap is nice and straight as I am bringing the other end over to um, feed it through the swivel clasp right here. So this is what it should look like. We've got our raw edge here. You can see that I've got the swivel clasp on the opposite side, kind of facing down. Again, making sure that the strap is not twisted at all. I'm going to go ahead and bring it back through um, the hole right here. And this is what it looks like now. Now I'm going to take that end again and pass it through this hole right here. Now we're going to take the other end and pass the second swivel clasp through, fold it over about two inches, and clip it into place. Now I like to double check and make sure that my strap is not twisted in any way. I also like to double check and make sure that the adjustable, you know, it actually is adjustable, that I, I went ahead and, and did everything appropriately. And everything's good. So now what I'll do is, um, since I am using the strap ends, um, I'm going to go ahead and make sure this is a little bit cleaner here. And I'll be adding on my strap ends right here. And I personally am going to go ahead and um, use some rivets to secure. Again, want to make sure that when you're, you're using those rivets, that you're doing it like this. So you can see it's the center bar right here. So you're going to, I'm going to rivet through here. I'm going to probably put two rivets here. But if you want, if you're going to go ahead and sew, you can go ahead and fold over the raw edge and do a box with an X right here. I think it's much easier to, to, to just use some strap ends. It adds a little bit extra bling to the, the strap. Um, I don't have to fight with my machine and, and sewing through thick layers. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and put my strap end on this side right here and do two rivets as well. And now I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process for the strap connectors. Uh, I've dra drawn that line down the center, folded it in towards the, the middle. The only difference with the straps is I'm not going to be folding it again. I'm going to leave it like this, and I'm going to top stitch again at one eighth of an inch. You're only going to have two strap connectors if you're following the pattern. But I am doing six because I'm doing the extra strap connectors uh, for the handles since I'm adding hardware. Now I've gone ahead and taken my exterior slip pockets, the lining and the panel, put them right sides together, pin them here at the top, and I'm going to go ahead and sew around the top edge right here. I'm going to sew at a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Repeat for the other side. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to clip my 
corners right here. My curves, I should say. Just like this. You can also trim down that seam allowance as well. Like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and um, turn it right side out. And I'll take this over to my ironing board and press it. If you're using vinyl, then you're going to go ahead, want ahead and just finger press it like this. And if you need to, use some uh, clips to kind of keep it in place. So let me go ahead and go over to my sewing machine right now and get that nice and pressed and I'll come back to top stitch. All right, now I've gone ahead and pressed uh, the top here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, top stitch it at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. And increase my stitch to a four for top stitching. There we go. We got our two pocket linings. Now I've laid my um, exterior pocket panels on top of my main exterior panel. I'm going to go ahead and base stitch around the edge here to secure in place. Increasing my stitch length to a five and base stitching at approximately a quarter of an inch. All right, now that I've got that base stitch, stitched on, what I'm going to do now is find my center seam, um, and I'm going to be uh, sewing down the center to create two pockets. I've decided for this particular bag, I am going to create the two pockets on one side, and on the other side, I'm going to leave one large pocket. Um, I'll take you over there in just a moment to show you how I do that. All right, to find the center, what I do is I like to fold the, pe the panel in half, Get my scissors, and I'm going to do a small notch right here at the corner. That'll help me find my center. I can repeat the same process for the top side. Once I've got my notches, I'm just going to go ahead and use my ruler and a disappearing ink pen to match up my notches. And draw a line. Now that I have my line drawn, I'm going to go ahead and take this over to the machine and place um, the needle one eighth of an inch away from the, the line that I just drawn. I'm going to sew down this side, across, and back down this side. Uh, that way I have two parallel lines of stitching. Um, and now if you are going to go ahead and do the two pockets on both sides, you'll repeat it for the other piece as well. But like I said, I'm going to leave this one one large pocket and have this one the two smaller pockets. There we go, two pockets. Okay, now I have my exterior zipper pocket lining. I'm going to go ahead and mark off where I need to create the zipper opening. I first start by drawing a line one inch down from the top of the lining. And I'm also gonna go ahead and do it one inch from the side. Okay, once you have your line drawn there, go ahead and draw another parallel line a half of an inch down from there. And now we're going to go ahead and connect those on the sides, making sure it's one inch. Now that I have my rectangle, I'm going to go ahead and divide that again um, by a quarter of an inch. Okay, 
And then I create a cup, um, a little triangle here on this side. This is going to be uh, a cutting line, and on the opposite side. Now I'll take my exterior panel, and I'm going to be placing it on top. Two and a half inches down from the top. So I'd like to place my ruler there to make sure that I have it right. And I'm going to eyeball it to make sure it's centered. Um, you can measure it as well. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and pin it into place and take it over to the sewing machine so I can go ahead and sew it. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and start by um, stitching along the outside of the rectangle. And I like to start from the bottom around the edge here. I've got my stitch length at about two and a half. Alright, there is the rectangle. Now what I'm going to do now is take this back over to my cutting mat and I'm going to use my rotary cutter to cut down the center line here, uh, stopping at the points here of the triangle. Now I'm going to take my snips here and make sure that I'm getting a really close to the threads, but not snipping through the threads. Okay, and the next step is to go ahead and pull the pocket lining through the hole. I'm flipping it over. And it just takes a little bit of uh, pull, pull in here and there to get it to go flat. And I'm going to take it over to my iron and press this nice and flat. There is two ways to do the zipper pocket lining, uh, depending on if you are using um, vinyl or cotton. Of course, I am doing the cotton method. There is also the instructions in the pattern for the vinyl method. Um, the vinyl method could also be done this way as well, um, but the, the instructions written in the pattern for the vinyl method uh, just reduce the bulk um, since we're not doing the churning method here like we're doing right now. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take this over now and press it and I'll be right back. Now I've pressed my zipper po uh, pocket opening nice and flat. Now it's time to go ahead and add my zipper to the window. What I like to do is use double-sided tape um, to secure it in place so that when I go sew it, it's, it stays nice and secure. Uh, one of the tips that I did have in the pattern is if you are brand new to um, doing zippers and uh, zipper pockets, I recommend that you skip ahead in the pattern to, to constructing the uh, zipper pocket for the lining. Um, and trying that out first before you work on the exterior of the bag. So that's something to think about. So I like to place the double-sided tape close to the edge of the zipper tape. And essentially what I'm going to be doing here is I'll remove the tape and I'm going to make sure that I get it centered here in the window. Um, we also want to make sure that before we sew down this side that we've taken our zipper and pulled it through the window because I think all of us know that we've done this before where we've left the zipper on the other side so we do want to make sure that we have the zipper inside the window like this. What I didn't mention is to make sure, the standard is pretty much to always have your zipper pulls um, to the left when you're working. 
So make sure that you have it at facing here to the left side and not to the right side. All right. So now I'm gonna take this over to my machine and I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch around the edges here at an eighth of an inch. Here's our zipper. I'm gonna go ahead now and cut off the extra here from the ends. I like to use an older pair of scissors whenever I'm cutting the zipper tape. Okay, now it's time to go ahead and close up the pocket. So I'm gonna take the um, bottom and meet it up to the top right here. And I'm going to go ahead and sew now uh, along the three open sides. So I'm going to start at the bottom, come up, down um, this side, and back down here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sew at about a quarter, uh, fourth of an inch seam allowance here. So what I do is I grab it nice and tight and put it in my machine to re-thread it here. Did a, all right, and now our pocket's nice and uh, sewn closed. So there we go. Now you can trim down the extra uh, seam allowance here if you'd like. Now it's time to go ahead and place the handle anchors down. Um, I've taken the handle anchor, I've drawn a center line at one and a quarter inches in, then I've taken the raw edges, folded in towards the center just like the strap connectors and the one um, step in your handles. So now that I have this, I need to place it one and three fourths of an inch down from the top edge. So I like to take my ruler and measure one and three fourths of an inch down. And that's where the top edge of the hand handle anchor piece is going. There is going to be a slight overhang um, that you can go ahead and trim off of the left and the right sides after you've sewn it down in place. So let's go ahead and repeat it for the other side. Okay. And when we go take this over to the sewing machine, we're only going to be sewing the top of the handle anchor. We're leaving this open because in a moment we're going to be inserting the handles um, under here. So just take it back to, to the sewing machine at one eighth of an inch and top stitch both the um, exterior panels on the bottom. Now I've gone ahead and grabbed my handles. Okay. And now what we want to do is we're going to grab one of our panels. And what we're doing is we're going to be lining it up right here at the edge where the curve um, ends. So we're going to go ahead and place our handle in here. Making sure that you've got it tucked all the way down um, to where you got that seam. And lining it up just like this. Going to pin it in place. I like to do it both sides here and making sure that it's not twisted go ahead and place the other one inside and get it lined up just at the edge right here as well all right now you'll take this um, and go ahead and sew at one eighth of an inch seam allowance along the top edge here. Um, and this is the standard, uh, that, um, the standard way of doing it in the pattern. Um, but now I'll go ahead and show you the way that I'm going to do it, adding the strap connectors and the hardware right here. Okay, I've gone ahead and grabbed my strap connectors here that I prepped earlier. 
and I'm going to be placing them just like I just showed you um, as you would with the handles. I'm going to tuck them down in here um, right and try to get them to match right up here. Uh, this is easier done um, kind of as you work because it's, it's difficult to pin these in place. You might be able to use some double-sided tape. Um, however, uh, my double-sided tape isn't that great. So I'm just going to get this lined up just like this and start sewing and then I'll insert the other one. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and get that other one inserted here. Making sure to get it all the way at the bottom. And making sure that it's nice and even with the edge. I need to come a little bit towards me. Okay, now go ahead and continue sewing. And there we have it. At this time, if you'd like, you can go ahead and add your uh, bag tag right here. Um, this is where I prefer to put it. Um, I've also seen uh, some of my testers put it down in this corner right here, uh, whatever you prefer. Um, I think I'm going to make for this bag, this be my back instead of my front, uh, just for something different. And this bag is going to be the front of my bag. This side, I should say, is going to be the front. So keep it now it's time to go ahead and prepare our exterior gusset by attaching the gusset ends to the main gusset. Um, and we also need to go ahead and place our strap connectors um, in between. Uh, what we can do is we can start by base stitching the strap connector to the gusset. I like to leave about um, a half of an inch extra because I'm gonna be placing my rivet uh, through there after I've got it all assembled. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that it's centered. You can certainly go ahead and find your centers by clipping, folding in half and clipping a little notch. And there we go, now we have our center. And then we grab our st strap connector. And then we place it nicely in the middle here, making sure that it's all centered with that half of an inch overhang. and sew this down with a fourth of an inch seam allowance. All right, now that's attached. I can go ahead and grab my gusset end matching um, the wide end right here, not the narrow end, the wide end to the end of the gusset. You can certainly go ahead and pin that in place if you need to. And then we're going to go ahead and sew this again at a fourth of an inch seam allowance. I like to um, back stitch a couple times just to make sure that the strap connector is secure. Once that's uh, sewn, you can go ahead and take it over to your sewing machine and press it so that the strap connector is up and that uh, extra overhang of the strap connector is also facing downward because what we're going to do um, if you're using rivets is we'll place our rivet right here. Top stitch right here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, there we have it. Now we'll go ahead and repeat for the other side. There we go. Now we have our gusset and, or excuse me, our gussets prepared for, um, now we need to go ahead and cut out our stabilizer and use this as a pattern piece to cut the stabilizer. So I'll lay out my stabilizer, lay this on top just as if it was a pattern piece and cut my stabilizer. Again, if you need to, you can omit the stabilizer from your seam allowances. I've gone ahead and gathered my supplies in order to attach my uh, Decaville Heavy 
to my gussets. I'm going to need a seam ripper in order to create the holes when I attach my purse feet since I am going to go ahead and do that. I've got uh, my scissors here so I can clip notches to find my centers and my ruler as well and a marking pen so the disappearing ink or you can use a regular pen if you want. Uh, you can apply the stabilizer before you attach your foam or your fleece, whatever um, stabilizer you're using. So you can put that beforehand or after, it, it doesn't matter, whichever you prefer. But what you need to do is you gotta start by finding your center of your stabilizer. Clipping the, the notches here. Now I know where my center is. I'm gonna repeat the same for the gusset. Now I can see my notches here. I kind of want to meet, match those up and get it centered. There is going to be some extra here because that is your seam allowance uh, because it is kind of difficult to sew through this, especially if you have a domestic machine. What I'll do is take this over now to the uh, um, iron and press this because it is um, adhesive. Once okay, I now I've gone ahead and added my stabilizer to my gusset. What I'll do now is go ahead and base stitch all around the outside since I'm using the non-adhesive stabilizer. All right, there we go. Now it's time to go ahead if you're going to use the Decoville Heavy. Um, as your bottom stabilizer, we're gonna go ahead and apply that. Okay, I've gone ahead and uh, ironed the Decaville Heavy to my gusset, and now it's time for me to mark out my purse feet, which are optional. What I'm going to go ahead and do is measure in one inch from the long side here, and two inches from the short side. And I'm, I'm using the stabilizer as the measuring point here. So we're gonna go in one inch, just got a marking there, and then I need to go in two inches. So right here is where my purse feet will be. And this is up to personal preference. If you'd like to place your purse feet a little bit wider apart, you can certainly do that. You can have the option to go ahead and enter, a, um, put in a center purse foot as well if you'd like. Now that I've got all my markings, what I wanna do is I'm going to use my seam ripper uh, to poke the hole through, and then I'll insert my purse feet. So what I'll go ahead and do is just push through here. And I usually go ahead and push into the direction towards the center, just to create a very small uh, marking there. And then I take my purse foot. From this side here, I'm gonna to try to find the hole that I just created and poke it through. There we go. Okay, and then you go ahead and open up the prongs and repeat for all the others. Now that I've installed all four of my purse feet, I'm gonna use some duct tape to cover up the prongs. That way it protects um, the interior fabric lining um, from poking through. Now it's time to go ahead and attach the, the gusset to the exterior panels. In order to do that, you need to have your um, centers found on both of your main panels here. I haven't done it on this one since I didn't add that center seam, so I'll go ahead and do that now by folding it in half and clipping. I'm doing the top as well, just so that whenever I do the, uh, when I put the bag together at the very end, that's already done. All right. 
And what we're going to do is I like to always start with whatever side's going to be my back piece, uh, j just because sometimes it can be a little challenging to go around those curves. So I like to practice essentially on the piece uh, that's going to be the back of the bag. Um, and so I've determined that the one with the zipper is going to be my back. Um, this is going to be my front with the label. All right, so I've already got my notches clipped on this particular piece. So what we need to do is we need to find the center of our gusset and the center of our exterior main panel. And we're going to meet those up and clip them here in the center. Once I've done that, I like to go ahead and place a clip over here to, the, to one side of the bottom. And then this side as well. And I like to go ahead and maneuver it so that I meet up the top edge and pin that in place. Alright, now I've got that done. Uh, what I like to do now is uh, get the corners ready by going ahead and clipping a couple of notches here. You can also go ahead and use a stapler and staple around the edges uh, to make sure that that's held into place. Um, and those staples can be um, cut out later on whenever we go ahead and trim down the seam allowance. All right, now let's go ahead and get the gusset sewn on, starting in the center here at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You can help use the guide of the uh, stabilizer here to tell you where to go ahead and um, place your needle at. I'm going to bring my stitch down to about a two and a half to three. Back stitch. Now it's important when you're going around the corners here that you do not get your needle caught into these um, staples, otherwise you will break your, ne your needle. Take it easy and take it slow around the corners. And you can see here I'm trying to get it nice and flat as I'm going around. Alright, we've got the one side done, and the corners look pretty good, not too much uh, bunching there in the corner, so I'm happy with that. Now we're going to go ahead and repeat it for the other side by flipping it over. Alright, let's take a look and see what it looks like. Alright, looks like I, I need to go ahead and go back a little bit and sew in a little bit more because I can see my one notch right here, so I'll go ahead and get that fixed, but other than that, everything looks really good. There we go, I sewed in close enough that time. All right, this is what she's looking like. Now, the top should come flush here. If it doesn't, you might have to make some modifications by either trimming down your gusset just a, a little bit or the top. Um, you can see here that I've got a little bit of a discrepancy here, so I'm going to go ahead and make the corrections as needed to make sure that's all the same. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get our other side, and we're going to go ahead and match that center gusset up with the center uh, bottom here of the main panel. Clip it into place and just as we did the other side we'll go ahead and clip all of these. All 
All right, just as I did before, I'm gonna go ahead and clip my curves here with my scissors, uh, make some notches in here, use the stapler to get that secured in place, and we'll take this back over to the sewing machine to get it sewn. Okay, I've gone ahead and put my staples in and clipped my notches. I'm gonna begin sewing from the bottom. All right, let's go ahead and take it over to the table and see how we did. We'll turn it right side out. All right, here she is, all pressed. So you are halfway done at this point. You've got the toughest part done. The exterior of the bag is the most challenging, um, mostly because you're working with the extra stabilizer that makes it a little bit more tougher to maneuver around those corners. Now it is time for us to start on our lining. And the first part, is to work on our lining zipper pocket. So I have grabbed my lining bottom piece and the lining zipper pocket piece. And just like we did on the exterior of the bag with the zipper pocket, we're gonna repeat the same process to do the lining zipper pocket. So I wanna go ahead and draw a line one inch down from the top here of my zipper pocket lining. And we're going to go one inch in from both sides. There's my line. Now we're going to move it down one half of an inch. Do our sides. Now we do our center, so a quarter of an inch. Do our triangles. And then we're going to place this on top of our lining bottom and it's going to be two inches down from the top. So I grab my ruler to measure, and we can find our center and we can measure it that way or we can just eyeball it. Right there. Pin it into place. I need to grab some pins so I can go ahead and pin it and I'll take it over to the sewing machine um, so that we can go ahead and sew around the outside of this rectangle. All right, now it's time to go ahead and sew. Got my stitch length at, an, at about a two and a half, starting at the bottom of the rectangle. All right, now I'm gonna take this back over to the cutting mat with my rotary cutter. I'm gonna cut the center line here. I'm stopping at where the triangle points are and then using my scissors to clip into the triangles right up to the um, threads, but not clipping my threads. All right, once we do that, we're gonna pull the lining to the hole. I've gone ahead and pressed my opening nice and flat and now it's time to go ahead and place my zipper on the bottom side. I've already taken double sided tape and put it on both sides of the zipper tape here. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay it under here and making sure that I get that zipper centered in the opening.
And then don't forget to get that zipper pull pulled through the opening so you don't sew it outside. I've gone ahead and also changed out my thread color to white. I had navy in there before um, because I don't want to I don't want to see the contrasting thread on the lining. So now I'm taking it to the sewing machine to sew around the edges. Got my stitch length at I'm gonna go a four, starting at the bottom here, one eighth of an inch. my zipper pull and pull it out of the way. Now it's time to go ahead and um, we need to trim off the ends here so I have to go grab my scissors to do that. So I'll, gr I'll grab that and trim off my ends and then we'll go ahead and close up our pocket by uh, sewing around the sides and then the zipper pocket will be done. Okay, there we go, trimmed off. And there's our zipper pocket. And I think it's important with this particular method that you always uh, select a thread color in your bobbin that matches your zipper tape. Uh, since we are not using the zipper facing method, we're kind of doing the, the quick method here with the zipper. Um, so it looks a lot better whenever that thread is matching. Now it's time to go ahead and move over to do our zipper pocket, or excuse me, our um, slip pocket here. I think I'm going to go ahead and add some SF-101 to the back so that it is a little bit more sturdier on here. Um, so I'll go ahead and iron that on. And right here is my slip pocket. I'm going to go ahead and meet it here with the... Uh, the uh, long sides are going to meet, meet up here and what we're going to do is sew one seam at a fourth of an inch seam allowance down just the one side basically creating a tube here. Once you've got that sewn you want to go ahead and um, turn the tube right side out. And make sure your seam is rolled out. And you'll take this over to the sewing machine to press it flat. And once we press this flat, what we're going to do is we're going to come back um, to the opposite side that we did not sew right here. And we're going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance here. So this is the unsewn side. And this is the, the side with the seam that we just went ahead and created. And now it's time to top stitch. Now it's time to go ahead and place this on top of the other side, uh, the bottom panel, the lining. I've got my bottom lining panel here with the slip pocket um, on top of it. I've measured up one and a half inches from the bottom and placed the bottom edge here of the slip pocket uh, to meet the roller. Um, I've pinned this in place here and what we want to do is we want to go back over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch at a eighth of an inch seam allowance along the bottom here. You can also, if you choose to, go ahead and base stitch along. I've got my lining here trimmed down the sides so that the extra is not there anymore. And what we need to do is make a marking at five inches and six inches along the bottom here, which I've already done with my ruler. And now we basically just need to eyeball it and make sure that we make a level um, even line here because our sides are tapered a little bit so we can't measure from the top at all. So I'm looking and I've got my five inch mark. And then I'm kind of using the top edge here as a reference. So the, and, it, and since this is the lining, if it is slightly crooked, you're just not going to be able to see that inside the bag. And let's go ahead and do six inches. And one thing you can do to make sure that that one is level is use your ruler if you have the clear rulers and line up right there. 
It might be hard to see. My pen is getting a little bit um, wearing out of ink here. Um, so now that we've got these portioned off, we can go ahead and um, sew them closed. Um, now, if you would like, if you have a, a phone that's a specific size or something that you know that you want to go ahead and place in these pockets, before you go ahead and make these markings and sew them shut, you can simply go ahead and slide in that um, item that you want into the pocket to make sure that it's going to fit properly. Um, and you can make the adjustments as needed. Um, this, for reference, is an iPhone 6. So this would fit nicely in both of those pockets. When I sew the pocket closed, I like to go ahead and place the side that we sewed here um, in first. Um, that way uh, it doesn't bunch up at all, so it's best to do it this way. So find my markings. I'm going to go ahead and sew with a three and a half. And then I like to reinforce um, the stitch here by back stitching several times. Another way that you can do it is just like we did on the uh, front slip pocket, is you could go ahead and turn it and come back down around the other side if you wanted to. But I'm not going to do that. Okay, now let's do the other pocket. All right, and there we have it. We have two pockets, and then we have a slip pocket for a pen, which I need to grab and I can show you. All right, here's an example of what the slip pocket is going to look like when you have your items in there. You got your phone, um, got the sun sunglass or eyeglass case here, and then the pen in the center. Now that we have both our lining pieces finished and ready. Now we can go ahead and move on to our zipper panel. We're going to go ahead and work on our zip recessed zipper panel. Grab your four zipper panel pieces here, because you're going to use those in a moment, as well as your 12 inch zipper or longer. We first need to go ahead and start by prepping our zipper um, and making these ends um, so that they're kind of rounded off. To do that, you want to go ahead and fold down at a right angle like this. And then you're going to go ahead and fold that back behind itself. And you're going to pin it into place. And that's what the back looks like right there. We're going to repeat for the other side. So go ahead and fold at a right angle. And then fold it back. And clip it into place. And then you can kind of make sure that it looks pretty even here. And we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew it right here. Um, just a couple of stitches. You could also use um, a needle and thread if you prefer to go ahead and hand stitch it um, and get it into place. I'll go ahead and do that real quick off camera. Okay, I've gone ahead and stitched my zipper ends down. I've also gone ahead and taken all of my zipper panels over to the sewing machine after I marked half of an inch in from the wrong side of the fabric and pressed them down. Now what you need to do is take your zipper and you want to go ahead and have the raw edge on the left here and that folded down side on the right. You're going to take your zipper right side up and place it one half of an inch from the edge of the raw side. So I'm going to use my mat here to measure. Okay, once I've got, done that, I'm going to go ahead and pin it into place. Okay. I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew it into place just along this one side and we're just going to do a base stitch to start. You want to have your zipper foot on to do this. Um, as you see, I've always been using my zipper foot. I just kind of prefer to, to sew with my zipper foot. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this at a stitch length of four. And let's just go ahead and do it at an eighth of an inch here. And then as you're coming to the end here, you're going to stop sewing. 
back stitch. And that's what it looks like. Now we're essentially going to go ahead and create a sandwich with the other zipper panel here. So again, we want to meet our raw edges right here. I'm going to pull the zipper out of the way. And go ahead and pin those into place if you'd like. I'm just going to go ahead and begin sewing. And I'm going to sew at a fourth of an inch seam allowance for this one. Reducing my stitch length to about a two and a half. One thing you want to make sure is that your ends are meeting up and I can see that my ends are not meeting up so I can adjust that before I finish sewing simply by going um, with my hands and getting that adjusted here. And there we go. And now I want to go ahead and sew along this edge as well. Now if I take and turn this around, see what it looks like. I want to make sure you get that zipper pulled out good. And if you need to, go ahead and use a turning tool to get that corner pushed out, which I'll go grab later. Um, but this is pretty much what you're going to look at. So in a moment, I'll go ahead and take that over to the ironing board, uh, trim off all these extra threads, uh, press this down. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and do the other side. So just to make sure that I don't have anything twisted, I've kind of closed my zipper again for the moment. I'm grabbing my raw edge, placing it a half of an inch from the edge, and top stitching, or I should say base stitching, add a fourth of an inch seam allowance, an eighth of an inch seam allowance, sorry. One thing you want to do is you want to make sure that everything is lining up appropriately um, on both sides of your zipper. So if I go ahead and get that kind of zippered up, I'm looking to see that the bottom here is matching up and it's not quite right. So I need to just make that adjustment right now. And just to make sure that that's nice and even, when I go do the other side, I'm going to flip this for the moment. All right, there we go. Now we'll go ahead and take our other um, last zipper panel, right sides together, meet them up. Now this is the one where you'll do a fourth of an inch seam allowance, reducing my stitch length to about a two and a half. Now I want to make sure that this is meeting up nicely. Okay. Um, another thing that I didn't mention earlier is actually trimming this corner here. So let me get some scissors and I'll do that. Okay, I've got my scissors. Let's trim this corner and this extra right here to reduce the bulk. And repeat for the other side. Okay, now I'll go ahead and turn this right side out. Use my turning tool here to get that corner nice. And then the other side as well. Okay, now that I've gone ahead and pressed my zipper panel, I'm going to go ahead and top stitch around these three sides. Okay, there we go. The next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that our zipper is trimmed down to 12 inches. If you like a slightly longer zipper tail, then you can certainly go ahead and cut it a little bit longer. And we're going to go ahead then and place our zipper tab on the end of our zipper. If you have zipper 
a zipper tab hardware, you can certainly go ahead and use that. Otherwise, you just take your zipper tab here and you wanna fold in your long sides towards the center, just like this. I happen to not have interfaced this just because um, this fabric wasn't too thin. And then you're gonna go ahead and fold in the short ends towards the middle. Once you've done that, fold it in half. And this will be your zipper end. Once I go ahead and get this uh, trimmed down to 12 inches, I'll go ahead and, and sew it right onto here. When measuring your, for your zipper tab, go ahead and start measuring from the very end here all the way down. So I've got 12 inches right here. I'm gonna opt to go ahead and cut it just a little bit longer. All right, there we go. Now I go ahead and apply my zipper tab. And we're gonna go ahead and sew a box around the edges. There we go. So our zipper panel is now complete. I'll go ahead and trim off any extra threads off camera here. And so now it's time to go ahead and apply our zipper panel to our lining and get that going. Now that I've completed my zipper panel, what I wanna do is find my centers and clip notches by folding it in half. And then just using your, your snips to go ahead and clip those notches there. Go ahead and grab both your lining bottom pieces and your lining top pieces. We'll start by working with the one with the zipper pocket first. Place your zipper panel on top, matching up the notches, and pin or clip into place. Take this to the sewing machine and sew with a fourth of an inch base stitch right here. Once you've done that, Take your top lining piece right side down, pin it on top here to make a sandwich with the zipper panel, and sew with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We'll go do that now. side done. Now we'll repeat the process with the other side. So we're going to turn it like this so that the zipper pull is now to the right. We're going to grab our other lining piece, match the center notches right there. And we're going to go ahead and repeat base stitching at a quarter of an inch seam allowance, an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So, so far this is what it should look like. And then the other side. So this is the side we just sewn with the zipper pull to the right. Go ahead and lay your top lining pa panel on top, matching the center notch. And we're going to go ahead and stitch at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. There's our zipper panel. Now that I've got my lining assembled, I need to go ahead and top stitch along the edge here. So what I do is I unzip my zipper. And I'm gonna make sure that on the back here that my seam is pressed upwards while I'm sewing. There we have it. Let's do the other side now. Making sure again that your seam is towards the top. All right. Now 
I'll take this over to the table and I'll show you how to install the gussets. Here I have my lining pieces. What I want to do is go ahead and unzip it. Put that to the side for the moment. You want to grab your gusset and you're going to clip your, your centers here like I showed you earlier, which I've already done. Take one side of your lining and if you haven't done so already, make sure you clip your centers. We're going to begin by placing the gusset face down on top of the lining panel. And we're going to go around just like we did with the exterior and pin everything into place. I'm going to go ahead off camera and continue clipping this into place. I'll be uh, clipping my corners here so that way I can get it to go around the corners and if I need to I'll go ahead and also staple um, in my seam allowances. Alright, I've clipped and stapled all my edges. So I'm going to go ahead and begin by sewing down the middle again. All right, we got one side done. Corner looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and flip it over to the other side. Okay. Just have to clip off some of the extra threads here. That looks good. So now we need to repeat the process for the other side. One thing that's important is make sure that the zipper is not twisted. So what I like to do is go ahead and um, zipper it back up. Making sure it's not twisted. Okay, so there we have it. Now we're going to go ahead and flip it over, match your center notches here, I'll continue to go around the edges and clip it into place. When I come back to the sewing machine, I'm going to make sure that I leave an opening right here about six inches wide so that I can turn the bag right side out later on. Okay, I've got this side clipped and stapled. So instead of starting in the middle, we're going to start about three inches off to the side. So we have our opening. Flip it over. Again, start about three inches from the center. Okay, so now we have our lining constructed with the opening here so that we can birth the bag later. I'm going to go in and trim off any of these extra threads um, and strings that are here. And basically now we need to just go ahead and insert the exterior inside the lining, which I'll do here momentarily. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that the lining panel with the zipper, if that's what you prefer, is going to be facing the back of the bag. And I'll show you that in a moment. Okay, I've gone ahead and placed my exterior inside of my lining right sides together. I've made sure that the side that has the zipper pocket is faced, faced against the exterior that I want to be my back. 
And what I'm going to do is take this over to the sewing machine and with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to go ahead and sew around all of the outside of the bag. Now, if you were doing the one where the handles were already sewn on, you're going to need to make sure that you have those handles tucked down inside so they're out of the way. All right, I'm going to go ahead and begin sewing. I usually like to pick the corner next to the, one of the back panels when I, to start sewing. ahead and got the sewing done now I'm going to go ahead and trim down my seam allowance as well as make notches all around all around these curves here that way it lays flatter once I turn the bag right side out okay so I've got her turned right side out I need to come in and sew up my lining here uh, I like to just go ahead and use my machine but you can certainly go ahead and uh, hand stitch if you like. So I'll we're gonna take that to the machine and do that off camera to sew that up. Bring her over to the iron, uh, press her flat. All right, so I've got her um, all turned right side out. What I need to do now is go around the outside of the bag here and top stitch at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Unzip your zipper when you're gonna go ahead and top stitch. I like to start in the back of the bag always, uh, usually at a corner. I like to crease my stitch length to about a four and a half. Measuring at about an inch and a half here. I want to make sure that all sides are the same. That looks good. Now I'd like to go ahead and make my markings with a pen. I just eyeball it in the center here. I have used some fray check at the ends here so that way it doesn't fray on me, even though I am using the strap ends. When it's thick like that, sometimes I just have to go ahead and do one at a time. And then usually what I'll do is I take part of the rivet and kind of press it down so that it makes an indentation where I need to place the other hole. I'll rivet that down and then I'll add my strap in at the end. Now I'm going to repeat this process for the remaining three. If you don't have a rivet press and you make bags a lot and you use rivets a lot, I highly recommend that you get a rivet press. It's kind of a game, cha game changer. I recently got mine and just love it. Now I'll add my strap ends. 
finger pressing this seems to work just fine. I've never had them fall off on me. But if you have a tool to use it, go right ahead and use that. Okay, okay let's just go ahead and add our strap. I did want to show you that you can make a simple shoulder strap that's not adjustable if you'd like. Um, you can also make a shoulder strap without the um, swivel clasp. If you just want to always have it adhered, you would just simply not use the clasp and just hook it onto the D-ring. So there's two different ways you can do the strap. So this is a simple shoulder strap. Or you can do the adjustable crossbody. All right, here she is, all finished. She came out so cute. Here's the lining. I had so much fun sewing along with you guys. I hope you did too. I do have a Facebook group that you can go ahead and check out. I'll put the link in the description box below. I'd love it if you could go ahead and share off any bags that you make with the martini crossover pattern. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.